We're learning it. I can tell you're learning it. You can be seated. Oh, I love that song. It's uh, takes, taken me a while to get used to it. Boy, I'm enjoying it now more and more. And they did a wonderful job with that. Praise the Lord. A lot to announce. As you see, the platform's all decorated up here. And this is important. This is all about tonight. Tonight and next Sunday night, we're doing a... Uh, a teaching on cherishing your spouse. Everyone say, cherish your spouse. Greatest teaching. Uh, my, my, my wife, you just ask her, she has a brand new husband. She, she, the last several weeks, she doesn't even know what's happened to me. She just keeps saying, wow, where have you been the last 70 years? And uh, it's just been really wonderful. Uh, experiencing a, a, a refreshing even of our marriage. And if I know the Lord can refresh my marriage, it's been going on for almost 49 years now, uh, He can refresh anybody's marriage. And uh, don't ever think that you know it all or you have it all or your marriage is perfect. I've never seen that in all the years I've been here. And uh, uh, it's just something we constantly have to be working on. But it is worth the fight amen? amen to have a home sweet home and i've been preaching on that for the last several uh several day, uh, weeks and we're going to be preaching to the women this week hallelujah but uh tonight cherish your spouse will start at six o'clock it's for anyone that wants to come but especially our couples and i think we have 12 or 13 maybe 14 couples that have signed up and some that said they would come, uh, they were, hadn't made a decision, please sign up. We have the sign-up sheets in the back, and please, out on the, on the table, if you want to come tonight, we'll be setting up tables. It'll be done here in the auditorium. It's probably going to be decorated uh, real nice uh, to make it uh, enjoyable for you. And we'll be showing a video and uh, breaking it down in sections, and it's going to be a real, real uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, blessing to you. So please... Come out and enjoy it. My wife's got some special treats for you and all kinds of stuff. She's been working on it. We were at a men's conference uh, uh, yesterday. We had 25 go under the umbrella of our church. We had 13, though, from our church that went, and we were so excited. It was great, wasn't it, guys? And I'm going to have them share later on uh, uh, the, the, what that conference meant to them. So we're going to take a Sunday, and they're going to share... Uh, and it might be this next Sunday, what God did in their hearts and lives, what they learned. Uh, Tony wants to preach a message. I just don't know when he's going to have it already. Now he's trembling back there. Uh, but uh, uh, I want us to share. I know Bill received something. Jeff got something from God. Even right. David. David got something from God. And, and uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful uh, time in the presence of the Lord. And I uh, know Sterling, he's the one that really set it all up. So guys, start getting ready. Scott, get ready. I want you all, these are guys that never come up here. They're going to be standing up here. And I can't wait to put them through that torture that I go through every Sunday of my life. Oh, it's great to teach our men how to tremble when they have to stand before people. And you think it's easy. I'm telling you, this is the greatest fear on the face of the earth Amen. is standing up publicly speaking to people. It will scare you to death especially when they look at you like you're looking at me right now. Okay, all that's, uh, all that's taken care of. Men's breakfast, we're supposed to do it on the 5th, uh, uh, then, uh, 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 on March 5th. I will be away. We're going to have a guest speaker here, Mike. Uh, uh, Blue is going to be ministering to us. Uh, and on the 5th, I will be away. I'm going to a conference, uh, uh, a, a time, a special time uh, for, for men. And uh, uh, it's called Crucible. And so your pastor's going to be crucified uh, for three days up in Chicago uh, with my son-in-law. And uh, we're looking forward to this. It's a very intimate time with God. And uh, you're getting away. How many know that pastor needs to get away? Absolutely. And I need times to just wait on God. And this is going to be just what it's all about, waiting on God and letting God crucify me. And uh, if there's anybody in this church that needs to be crucified, anybody in this church that needs to grow and get closer to God, if there's anybody that needs the Lord in their life more than anybody else, it's me in this church. And I realize that. And so I need to take special times through the year just to get away for me Amen. and Amen. the Lord. 
And uh, to me, this is going to be a very special time. First time I've been to this type of conference. It's very challenging, but we're looking forward to it. And so be praying for your pastor and be praying for Brother Mike. Uh, he'll be coming and ministering to us. And I know you will enjoy him so very, very much. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, have Wednesday night service at 6 o'clock. The youth, Ashley's been doing a tremendous time uh, with the youth. And then also we have Bible study on the book of Daniel. Yeah. And it starts at 7 o'clock. The youth is at 6 o'clock. And so please uh, uh, be out here for the Daniel, Daniel teaching. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing it in the other classroom, but if we have too many, we'll move it back here in the auditorium. And uh, we just want to make it accommodal, uh, accommodating to everybody. And I believe you're going to learn a lot from the book of Daniel. It's been interesting, hasn't it? And we're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I believe it will be a, a blessing to you. Praise God. Well, I believe that's it, except that we need to pray. Um, the Steinmans have not been here for some time because Alan's been going through uh, surgeries and whatnot, but he's got an earpiece now, and he can hear for the first time uh, through here. They did a, an operation on him, and so uh, they put this earpiece in. You know, all this part of his uh, face was removed and here from his cancer, and he's hearing now from this ear for the first time uh, for, for uh, several years now. So that was marvelous, and they will be back with us. But I got a call last night. AJ, their, their oldest son, we know AJ really well, lives uh, uh, in another state, had a tragic accident and uh, broke his sternum. He's not sure. He has a lot of pain. Asked me to pray. This happened last night. And we want to pray for AJ. And then I want to pray for Linda, Maple's mom. How is she doing? Any better? Okay. Not doing real well, but... Uh, uh, we just need to pray for her mom. She's in a care facility, and God's helping her. And then Brian Stillwell got the call last night, and he's in the ER right now, intensive care, uh, actually intensive care. Uh, his diabetes got a bad infection. He's a real, he's, he's got juvenile diabetes, and Brian has been so close to death so many times, and he's right there. And so I know that uh, his mom, Darlene, is, is just feeling the, the pressure of this, and so... Uh, let's hold up Brian before the Lord, okay? I wonder if we could stand to reverence the Lord and his presence, asking to bless this service and take care of these special needs here this morning. Father, I thank you that we can enter into your presence. God, in the moment we call upon your name, yeah. you hear the moment. The moment our minds go to you, Lord, your mind comes to us. And Lord, we know that you're mindful of us and that, Lord, your, your affections are towards us and you hear us when we cry and you know our needs. And Lord, you see Darlene even now, her heart is with her son, Brian. And I pray, God, somehow you'd spare his life and bring healing, take care of this infection that, that's uh, entered into his stomach, Lord, and all the area of his intestine. And God has affected his diabetes. Lord, in your gracious mercy, let the medications work. Give the doctors wisdom and spare Brian's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Be with AJ, Lord. Help him. He's suffering right now with this accident that he's been involved in. We thank you. You spared his life. We pray you'd be with him in a special way and draw him close to you, Lord. May AJ realize that his hand is in the hand of God. His life, Lord, belongs to you. And Lord, I'll praise you for that. You're such a faithful God. And we bring Linda's mom to you, Juanita. What a precious saint. All through her life, she served you, Lord, and loved you. Now she suffers with dementia and now this illness. I pray, God, you keep your hand upon her. Let the joy of the Lord be her strength, God. And I pray that you'd comfort her in that facility and protect her and heal her for your glory. And have your way in this service, Lord. Pour out your spirit. Pour out, Lord, your love. Pour out your joy. Pour out your speed, your, your peace, Lord. Joy. Pour out your truth, God, today. And let the songs and the worship and everything be used to draw us to you. And we'll praise you for it and glorify you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. And everyone said... Amen. God bless you. Let's enter in. Let's worship the Lord and let God have his way.
words that, that people have for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. And just be happy and joyful. <laughs>
Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your Let's ask the Lord to do that right now. Let's just take some moments to open our hearts and worship him. Raise your voices. Raise your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you're welcome here through the power of your Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. Hallelujah. 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 Let the joy of the Lord fill this house. Let your peace, let your glory, let your truth, let your will be in this place, Lord. Oh, let our hearts be submissive to you, oh God. Let your spirit have his way. God, minister to us, minister to us through your word into every one of our hearts. Oh God, give us open hearts to receive your truth. Hallelujah. And God will bless you. We will praise you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Lord. Amen and amen. Lord. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh my. Enjoyed that very much, ladies. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Yeah, enjoyed it very much. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Ephesians 5 again. That's where I was at last week. And uh, of course, dealing with the family and the home and Ha, you know, having a home sweet home has been my, uh, my, my theme through this month. And I've been uh, just blessed to prepare. And, and uh, the home means so much to me, but that's not what matters. What matters is it means so much more to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's one of the three institutions that God uh, 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 designed. It. And when he was designing this world, it was, first of all, the home or the family. That's why he created Adam and Eve, because he knew we needed a family. And from that family, he was going to build what we call uh, uh, the, the, the governments of this world. You see that later on in Genesis, where he began to bring government uh, into control and uh, after Noah came out of the flood and began to organize the, the government and that. And then later on, from the family, God was going to institute the church, which we are enjoying today. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And those are the three uh, things that God did in, in, his, in his plan and his purpose for all of us. And so we're here today uh, uh, because of the goodness of God towards us. That's instituted these wonderful uh, things that we have to enjoy in this world. And uh, I thank the Lord that the greatest of all of these is the family. Amen. Amen. How many know you can have church in the family? You really can. Yeah. We've had church in our family so many times, uh, uh, just singing, worshiping, uh, having devotions and family time. And uh, my house many, 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 many times has just become a place that's been filled with the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I thank the Lord for that. I love it when my kids come around and both my boys play the guitar, my wife plays the piano and whatnot. And, the, and, the, and they'll, they'll start playing their guitars and I'll get out my guitar. And uh, I, that was so funny. And just a couple weeks ago, we had uh, uh, one, some of the grandkids with us. And uh, I told them, I said, did you know that your grandpa plays the guitar? And their eyes just lit up and said, no, you can't play the guitar. I said, yeah, I can get, play the guitar, and I can sing. And they didn't believe me, so I pulled it out, and I played the guitar and sang a song for them. And I think I maybe I told you this already, but they told me I need to make a, I need to make a recording. Amen? 
I love grandkids, you know. Oh, yeah. So innocent. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, and, and I might not be able to satisfy too many people with my singing, but boy, they were touched by it. And uh, oh, yeah. I had a joy doing that. But God is, God is so good. And we dealt last week about husbands loving their wives. And when you do it with a sacrificial love, a sanctifying love, and a sensitive love, and how we need to meet the needs of our women, uh, their affection, their need for conversation, their need for honesty and openness, uh, their need for financial security, and the family commitment, and how this is so important uh, for uh, the men to do this. And it's a calling that God has placed for our life. It's a holy calling. It's the most sacred thing you'll do on this earth is to be the man of your house. Amen. I'm telling you, I take it as the greatest challenge and the greatest blessing in my life is to be known as the patriarch of my home and, and to have my children honoring me and me loving them and a wife that loves me and cherishes me and a wife that I love and cherish mean more to me than anything else in the world other than my relationship with God. And that relationship all hinges on my relationship with my family. It's so important. And the only time I ever, ever even have the inkling thought of resigning from the ministry and quitting is when I'm a failure as a father and I'm a failure as a husband. And it's happened from time to time where I've just failed God and I felt so miserable and I can fail you, I can fail anybody. But when I fail God and I fail my wife, I'm telling you, I just feel like quitting. I feel like it's uh, everything that I live for, everything that I stand for is in that relationship. And uh, it means more to me than anything else in the world. And uh, sometimes I fail in those areas just like you guys do. But I hammered that so hard last week and I try to make myself vulnerable. I want to be honest and open with you. And uh, I always try to do that. Some pastors try to cover it up and make it like they're perfect. And I got news for you. I know many, many, many pastors and none of them are perfect. <laughs> I have many, many homes I've been into. None of them are perfect. And we're dealing with what God wants. Not always what God gets, but what God wants in our life. And we are to have a goal to give God what he wants. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we fail, but sometimes we succeed. And when I am succeeding, I never feel greater in my spirit than when I'm doing that which pleases my wife. Because when I know I please my wife, I am pleasing my Savior. Amen. And that's so important. Amen. Uh, but this morning I want to talk to the wives and uh, uh, the husband's number one need. Remember I told wives number one need is what? To be cherished, beloved. Okay. Husbands are to love their wives like Christ loved the church. Preached on all that last week for these husbands. Now I want you to turn to Ephesians 5.22. I want to read some verses to you this morning. Wives, wives, women, if you're not married, if you plan on getting married anytime soon or even, time, even if you're not planning on it, but hey, it happens, believe me, catch this next word. This is the greatest need. Submit yourselves under your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Amen. And uh, uh, I want to establish that this morning. God made things pretty simple in marriage life. Just two things we need to do. We struggle to do it, but husband, if you'll just learn to love your wives, and wives, if you'll learn how to submit to your wife or to your <laughs> to your husband, uh, uh, it will. Man, we've had a long week. Let me tell you. So if I goof up a lot of times this morning, and if I drag on for an extra hour. You'll know why. My brain's moving real slow right now. We've been in men's conference and had so much going on this week preparing for this. 
We've not had a break. My wife and I have been at the computer for hours and hours and hours, and she's been there. And I was there last night, and I don't even want to tell you when I went to bed, and I don't want to tell you when I got up this morning. And it, just sometimes uh, that's the pressure uh, that's on you for, uh, for ministry and the work that God has for us to do. So if I seem a little dull this morning, it's because I am. <laughs> but our culture... Of, uh, and the, uh, the, the concept that our culture has of submission uh, is almost scary. Uh, uh, it, it causes you to cringe when you hear that word, submit. I mean, I did a wedding one time, and I used that in my wedding uh, vows, when I was doing the wedding vows with the, with an, in my little discord course on marriage. And afterwards, the, the, the mom grabbed me in a corner and lectured me. She didn't like that word. And I said, well, I didn't put the word there. God did. You're, you're talking to the wrong person. You better talk to God. You got a problem? It's with God, not with me. I didn't put it in there. No. I would never have put that in there. Not with all the wars I've had over the years with women. No. uh But God's wiser than this pastor is. And he knew what our wives needed. And I'm telling you, we need to teach our wives, God says, how to be submissive, amen? But our culture's got it all twisted, uh, all twisted up, and it's, it's hard, uh, 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 it's, it's probably the hardest part of being a wife, and that's why God asked you to do it, amen? God knew the hardest thing for a man to do was to love his wife, because we're just, we're just men of honor, respect. That's what we demand, that's what we want. Women want love and gentleness, and so God says, women, give your man what he needs. Men, give your wives what they need. Be gentle, be loving. Okay, I don't want to preach to you guys again, but I'm telling you, I hammered it hard. But God says, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. And God uh, wants this more than anything else. And I know for your women that stinks. I know you hate it. Now, because that's what the world has instilled in you, that, and you have this women's liberation movement going on, and, and the me, me movement, and everything else, and just garbage from the world and the culture that attacks the home, and everything that God stands for, the world stands against. And everything that they teach you out here in our culture, 99% of it is wrong. It's based on human philosophy, human thoughts, and human ways. And I'm telling you, it comes from the gutter. It comes from the pits of hell. But I'm telling you, this is the truth. Amen. Right here. What God has said about marriage. Yeah. He, he designed it. He created it. Yeah. God makes no mistake. It's right here, Tim. I'm telling you, we just follow these simple rules. Simple. It's so simple that even men can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to offend you guys, but it's, that's why God made it so simple. And women, too. Because he knew we were just kind of kind of weak and frail compared to God. And so he kept it so simple. Love your wives. Women, submit to your husbands. Isn't it? And the culture, though, has got it all goofed up. And uh, uh, they like to teach that you, to, to submit is that you must do whatever you're told to do. Thank you. That's not what submission means. That's what the world says. And that's what they blast us for. And they say, you preachers, and you preach that a woman has to submit. She has to do whatever the husband knows. I'm going to defy that on Facebook today and say, no, we don't preach that. Any good preacher won't preach that. Any good husband won't live that. I'm telling you, that's not what the Bible teaches about submission. It's not that they must do whatever they are told to do. Any man that has that kind of a thought about submission is an abuser. Yes. And he will kill his marriage and destroy yes. it. And that's why over 50% are falling apart because they don't get the real concept. They listen to what the culture says and they don't get what real submission is. But uh, uh, we, we, we love to think we're in control. Amen? We love that. Men love that. And uh, uh, we don't want anybody telling us what to do. That's right. And women are the same way. How many know women are stubborn? Amen. How many know men are stubborn? How many know the whole race is a bunch of stubborn people? Yes. And so God takes marriage 
to tear that, that root of, of evil that's in our heart called sin out of us. And he uses marriage to, to conform us into the image of God and to teach us what real submission is. See, the, the thought that, uh, 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 that the person that is submitting is less of a person uh, than the one that they are submitting to is the concept of the world. It's what the culture teaches you. But just because you submit to someone doesn't mean you're lesser than they are. Amen. Women were created to be equal with men, taken from our rib, from the river of the man and coming along beside them and to be a helpmate. And we're going to get into that in just a few moments, but I'm telling you, God never intended men to us, usurp authority over a woman and, and to be like a, a lord over their, them and, and to control their every thought in life and, and to be so possessive and holding on to them uh, that they have no freedom at all. No! That's the concept of this world and it's sick. Amen. Men need to realize that uh, the person that is submitting to them is not less than them. That's right. And sometimes if they handle this right, the women will elevate themselves even above the man in the eyes of God. It's like a sergeant in the military He's barking orders and acting like an idiot and treating the little private there uh, like he's a, a little worm and, and, and everything. But you see that private just saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get down do 50 squats. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, run through that one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever he tells you. And it looks, and every, all these other soldiers, you know what they're thinking? That sergeant's a jerk. He's an idiot. <sighs> But you know what they're thinking of that soldier? Man, he's got grit. He's great. He's a man of honor. That's what the other soldiers are thinking. And it don't matter what the world thinks. It just matters what God thinks. And when he sees you women submitting and doing what you know you should do as unto the Lord, God looks down with pleasure upon you. And not only that, the world will see it. The church will see it. People will see it. And they will realize that women, I'm telling you, you don't lower yourself by submitting. You raise yourself. You elevate yourself up. And I'm not talking about abuse here. I'm not talking about a man over, overextending his authority in your life. But I'm telling you, when you submit, it's not making you a less of a person. It's making you a greater person Amen. in the eyes of God. And it's nothing to do with claiming men and women are not equal. I promise you, I will never, I look at you as equal. I look at the wife, I look at the husband as equal in the sight of God. He's elevated you both to a place of esteem and glory for his sake. And when you put that together as a woman, hallelujah, and in a marriage, God will bless you. I, I've only thrown one person out of my office. Only one person has ever been thrown out of my office. And I literally told him to get out, out of my office now. Get out that door. Don't ever come back to this church again. Because he was disgracing his wife, who was godly and more precious than that guy could ever understand. And to this day, he is an absolute idiot, an arrogant fool that thinks he's righteous and holy and greater than anybody else. And he's on his way to hell. Because he has failed to honor his wife. I'm telling you, I won't stand for that. I believe that I've got to stand for certain things. And when I see a husband just, just humiliating his wife and doing things that I know are evil and wrong, nothing boils my blood more than that. So ladies, I will come to your defense if you act like, if your husband's acting like an idiot, don't ever hesitate to call. My wife and I'll go, and we will deal with the matter. And if I can't handle it, she can. Yeah. <laughs> I got his name written down. Here. Don't put his name up on the board. Amen. They might get it confused. I forgot the Sterling's getting my notes on the computer. And, and I just put it there to check my brain. I've not seen him for a long time, but I know the situation has not gotten any better. This is going back many, many years ago. And uh, he knows he's not welcome in this church. And I told him until he's ready to repent of his arrogant, mean-spirited, proud, arrogant ways. And I told him right to his face. I followed him out in the parking lot. I said, just go. You're not welcome in this place. I, can't, I don't want that spirit coming into this church. And uh, 
You might have thought that was kind of rough, but I'll tell you what, that's the way God feels about a man that disrespects his wife. Amen? And so uh, submission uh, is something that's precious in the Word of God. And it's not just in marriage. Submission is something that God teaches to us and, and wants us to live. Uh, the Bible even says in that same passage in, in Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 21, it says this. Uh, uh, we are all to submit one to another. Amen. Submission is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. Submit to one another. It doesn't make you lower than somebody if I submit to Jerry or Jerry submits to me. It just puts us on the same uh, a place of respect and honor. And that's what God wants. And also it says we're to submit to the authorities that are over us in, in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, to submit to the authorities. Pay your taxes, do what you're supposed to do. I hate to pay my taxes, but I submit to it. I do it. And there's a lot of things we're going to hate to do, but it's the right thing to do and do it. Right. Amen? Amen? God will help you. Pay your taxes. It's coming up. You can tell what I've been thinking about here the last several days. And, uh, <clears throat> when you do that, you're, you're, you're doing what God wants you to do. And so submission is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. And I love it when I see a woman submit to a husband. Uh, my mother-in-law, Sister Cover, some of you still know her. She's passed on for about three or four, four years now since she passed away, godly woman. But her, her, she was always sick. She had colitis, a lot of illnesses just growing up. And as a child, she had, I mean, as a, when Kathy was born, she was a miracle baby. She should have never been born. They told her she could not get pregnant. She had colitis, and there was a lot of issues going on with my mother-in-law, who was in, had major surgeries done years ago when she was in 20s, in her early 20s, and uh, uh, said she would never have children. So my wife is a miracle, and that's why I know God made her for me. It's an absolute miracle that she's really here. And um, my mother-in-law suffered. We've seen her very, very sick. Many times I saw her very sick. And all of a sudden, my wife and I go to Africa. And the next thing, we come home from Africa after being there one term. And uh, Brother Cover's talking to me. And he said, uh, uh, Royce, don't tell Esther yet. I've not told her, but God's called me to go to Africa. I know I'm supposed to go. He took me to the Philippines. We had a great 15 days in the Philippines, ministering to the people there in a great ministry. And when I was on the way home, he told me, God's called me to go to Africa yeah, but I, I got to break the news kind of slowly to Esther, and so just keep it under your hat. And so I was keeping it under my hat, and I'm thinking, oh my word, he's going to take her to Africa. There, if you eat anything wrong, it can upset your digestive system and diarrhea, dysentery. That is so common, I'm telling you. You just don't have to, have to worry about getting fat over in Africa. It's, boy, it, it'll clean you out really. Well, like one week, you're, you'll lose 20 pounds. And so we see that all the time. I'm thinking, oh. And my wife and I talked. We hope this is the right decision and everything else. Came to my mother-in-law. She had, could have given a hundred reasons to say, George, this is not a good idea. George, I don't think we should do this. George, I don't think I can handle this. George, I don't know if, if my body's up to this and, and at this stage in my life. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? They were in the, nearing their, almost in their 50s we're ready to go over to, uh, to Africa and with her frail body like it was. And, uh, and she just looked at, my, uh, at her husband and she says, George, I followed you this far. I'll just keep following you. If you want to go to Africa, I might die over there, but... Uh, you go, I'll go. And they went, and this is the miracle of her submitting to her husband. She was there for 12 years, and God kept her in perfect health. Amen. Perfect health. Woo! Perfect yeah. health. Yeah. Hallelujah. That is the goodness of the Lord. And brought her home, and she was with us in perfect health up until the day she fell and hit her brain uh, in her head and bled to death from a, a, a brain deed. And even that was a gift from God because God had told, oh, she'd been calling us in saying, I don't want to be a burden. I know I can't see and I can't hear and I don't want to be a burden to you and Kathy. And I kept saying, Sister Cover, we love you. You'll be in our home till the day you die. You will be in our home. We will take care of you. We'll turn this place into a nursing home. You will we'll take care of you until we cannot take care of you anymore. You are 
our life and blood and we I promise to take care of you I promised your husband we will take care of you till you die so I don't want to be a burden I don't want to be this I don't want this. and then just not even a day or two later she was telling her sister on the phone I don't want to be a burden to them just the Lord would take me to be with him and she fell hit her head and the Lord took her to be Bless with him you. I'm telling you God honors a submissive Amen. yielded woman to the ministry and to uh, the call that God has placed upon their husbands to do what they need to do. But that doesn't mean that men are always right. Brother Cobra could have been wrong, but he was right there. I've been wrong a few times. My son wanted a motorcycle. I said, I think that's a good idea. My wife said, I don't feel good about this. I says, you don't? She says, no. I don't think you should. I says, honey, leave it to me. He, I rode on a bike motorcycle for 22 years in Africa. He can handle it. He can do it. I don't think he... Oh, man. Whew, back and forth, back and forth. She kept saying, I don't feel good about this. Voice. Tears. I don't feel good about this. I said, honey, let's listen to your husband. Ryan can handle it. He did. We bought him the motorcycle. He handled it for about 25 days. Yeah. <laughs> then he was laid up for a whole year with a motorcycle accident and almost put me in the bankruptcy. And it was like, whoa. And for some years, my wife said, <clears throat> see? <laughs> you know, you can finish the rest of the sentence. I told. <laughs> Is how many men have ever heard that? I've heard it many a time in my life, so I have been wrong, but there's been times I have been right, few times, and I love it when I'm right and she's wrong, and then I can tell them, I say, see, I'm not always wrong, just most of the time. <laughs> Listen to your wives, I'm telling you, <laughs> they're, they're, they're given to you for a divine purpose, and uh, it's so beautiful, and the good part is that God has told you how to fulfill your purpose and to glorify him. And you develop that inward beauty that God wants to do in your life when you learn to submit to your husband. This is what the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 1, ladies. Likewise, ye wives, be in submission to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of your wives. You can win them to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just by your conversation, just by your lifestyle. He says, while they behold your chase, pure a conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be with the outward adorning of plating of hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. Hey, those things never show the real true beauty of a woman. The true beauty of the woman, this is what the Bible says, but let it be that hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection under their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, and as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. I'm telling you, allow God to teach you how to submit, ladies, and I'm telling you, God will honor you and bless you and make you beautiful in the eyes of your husband. Amen? And that is the power. That is the power that a woman holds in her heart. And nothing wrong with dowing yourself up and doing your hairs and, and, and doing whatever you want to make yourself look outwardly pretty. That's fine. I'm not against that. But that's not the real you. You know why? Because we have television and I see Hollywood all the time putting it out there. And some of those ladies are the most miserable people. They've been divorced and remarried so many times. I think Elizabeth Taylor set the record nine times. Maybe not, but she said she she was one of the most pretty women out there in the world. But I bet you inside, she was wretched. <laughs> Nobody can live with her. I mean, I can see one divorce, I can see two divorces, but nine divorces. About the time, about the time I'm in my fifth or sixth divorce, I'm going to start asking myself, what is wrong with me? Hello. Usually it takes a man about that long to figure out that the problem is not with the woman, it's with him. Or the woman takes that long to find out the problem is not with, with, her, but, uh, with, with him, but with her. But I'm telling you, search your hearts. And uh, 
uh, know that it's, it's not an outward beauty. That's it, men, many times marry for that reason, make the most tragic mistake in life. And sometimes it, it, it works out, but a lot of times it don't when you marry for those reasons. And uh, I'm not saying that beautiful women can't have a meek and a quiet spirit, but a lot of, a lot of them can't. They're so beautiful. And uh, it goes to their head, and they act crazy and do stupid things. And if you don't believe me, just watch the, the news and watch Hollywood and follow a little bit. I don't follow that just enough to make me sick to see how some of these most beautiful women act in their spirit and almost demonic in the words that come out of their mouth filthy words and these actors these stars and they're supposed to be on people follow them and they talk so filthy mouth the women you ever notice that just filthy stuff i i mean i just couldn't believe some of the stuff i've heard come out of the mouth of women it's just to me it disgraces them but be of a chaste a pure heart a, a submissive heart i'm telling you that will adorn you with the grace of God and the goodness of God upon your life. And so I want to give you not the cultural view of submission, but the scriptural view. And I want to do it real quickly here this morning. But the first scriptural uh, uh, definition of submission is this. And the Lord God said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. The first scriptural definition of submission is to be a helper. Ladies say helper. Helper. Say it. Boy, was so weak. Say it again. To be a helper. Oh, it's so weak. Let's say that again. I want your men to hear that. To be a helper. Yes. Hallelujah. A helper. And uh, that's what the Bible says. I didn't say that. But wives, you have been created to help your husband. And uh, this is the biggest responsibility you have, uh, is to help your husband. He saw that it was not good for, them, uh, to, to, for man to be alone. And so God built the woman out of man. Everything else that God made was from the dust of the earth. But you, women, were secretly taken out of man. And God created you out of man, not out of the dust of the earth, though he was made of the dust, but he created you out of man. Doesn't that thing elevate you a little bit more? So men, don't step her under your feet like she's, like she's dust and dirt. No. Hey, she came out of you. God designed her and prepared her just to be a part of you, to complete you, to make you into the person God wants you to be, men. And so she comes alongside to help you. And I think that's such a, a beautiful, beautiful picture. And we complete each other. I'm telling you, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, I, I don't know what I do. My biggest helper is my wife. She helps me. I was away at a men's conference. She was home kill, killing herself for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, uh, days and days and days and days, pre preparing for this conference that's coming up tonight. And then I came back and I found the, the kitchen table uh, completely filled with all kinds of things and all these things bought and prepared. And I helped her get some of this uh, together, uh, shopping and everything. But when I came, I saw it all laid out there and she's showing me even your water bottles are going to be special <laughs> only my wife I would not do that in fact you probably wouldn't even get a water bottle if it was up to me <laughs> but she has it all laid out so we're going to have little treats for you and snacks and candies and I don't want to give it all away or we'll have the place flooded tonight that's my wife. She's my helpmate. And when I can't do it all, she's right there to fill in all the gaps where Pastor Roy fails uh, to live up to your expectations you have of me. And I thank God for such a wonderful helpmate. And, and we complement each other. Uh, she's my organizer. Amen. You, I could go to my office and work for three days and come out and it looks like a disaster. And I went into organizing. And my wife can walk in there honestly before. In 20 minutes, I walk in and say, Whoa, what you, how did you do this? This is beautiful. How did you do this? 20 minutes. I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. That's my wife. 
she just knows how to do it. I, I move it from here to here, and from here to here, and then back to here, and here. I spend an hour moving one thing all over my office, and when I get done, I say, huh, looks good, and the next time I walk in my office, it still looks as scattered as it was before. I think, how does she do this? I just don't know. She compliments me, completes me in so many ways, but that can be, you know, she's, I, I compliment her too. She can't make a quick decision. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, go into, we go into a store, we'll go into Kohl's, and she's going to buy a dress. I told her, I want her to buy a dress. She's always going to the store and buy me something. I'll say, I want you to buy something for yourself this time. Just please, buy something. Huh. I never know what I'm asking for until I ask it. And she'll get this, uh, six it in the... I said, honey, I said, one dress. She's already got seven in there. I said, she says, that's okay. When I get them home, I will try them on, and then you can take back the, one I, the ones I don't want. I'm going, okay, she knows I'm telling the truth. Yeah, she's right there. She's listening to this one. Ah. She gets her dress on. She tries them all on, asks me to look at each one. I'm looking at each one. I'm going, oh, my word. <laughs> And, and finally she gets the one that she likes. It's really bad when she tries on all seven and says, I don't like any of them. <laughs> You'd think a guy would be happy because he's going to save money. But I got to take them all back and say, okay, here's this one. What's wrong? Nothing wrong with this, nothing wrong with this, nothing wrong. My wife just didn't like it, didn't fit her right. I don't know, but, but I do it sweetly to my wife. And if it's a woman that's waiting, I treat her sweet too so that... I don't create some problems for myself. But we <laughs> compliment each other. And she'll say, what do you think of that? I say, honey, I, that, that's the one. I like it. I like it. Not, sometimes I can really convince her. And she will do it. But um, most of the time, that's the, not the way it goes. And, but we need to be supportive of each other. But women need to support their husbands. They need to be there to be a, a help to them. And uh, when you're not helping, you're hindering the home. Yeah. And your attitude, your behavior, your actions, uh, all these things, uh, your responses to your husband, and how you respond uh, can really upset a home. And so you've got to learn how to be a helper, but not domineering, a helper that comes along and tries to give guidance and help to the husband. Secondly, to honor your husband. Ephesians 5.33 says this, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverences, that word means to honor and respect her husband. How do you honor him? How do you honor him? Okay? Your honor, you honor your husband by recognizing his needs and striving to meet them. A real wife will realize the weaknesses of a husband, and she will look at ways to minister to those needs. And uh, um, one of the greatest needs of a husband is to be needed, <laughs> just to feel needed. And when you let your husband know he's needed, that you can't live without him, and that you really love him. If you love him, he's going to sense every day that you really need him and help him to feel needed. Am I speaking the truth, guys? Oh, man. Huh? Don't right you like to feel needed? Right and uh, I love it when my wife says, I need you, and I just appreciate what you do for me. And uh, uh, that's so important. And we honor our husbands by helping them feel needed and let him know that he is needed and praise him when he fixes things and helps you in the areas that you need. And you know what? Sometimes, ladies, just conjure up something in your mind. Just, I know you really don't need him for that certain thing, but let him think that you really need him. <laughs> It'll just elevate his ego. He'll, he'll come walking out of there going, huh, huh, showed her a few things there. Huh, yeah. I'm not as dumb as she thinks I am. 
Just don't mess up when she asks you to do it. That's the only thing. Honor your husband in that way and help them. Help them. Well, I should say, that's the first thing. Help them and then honor. Honor your husband. And you honor him by, by just letting him know how much you need him. And uh, so uh, the Bible says you honor your husband uh, by doing that and then support him as he leads. As he leads, as he makes decisions and whatnot. When it doesn't matter, just be happy that he's making a decision and doing something to lead the family. And uh, if he comes home and says, hey, hon, let's just go in the backyard and sit down. You've got a million things going on. Hey, let him lead you to the backyard and sit down with him. Don't be grumbling. He never talks to me. The one time he comes home and says, hey, let's go. And remember, he's getting this teaching now, so expect to have... Brand new husbands in the next weeks, okay? So if your husband says, hey, let's go back. I know it's been a busy day for you. I love you, honey. Let's go back here and talk on, on the back porch for a little bit. Don't fall over dead. <laughs> Don't be shocked. Let him know he's needed. And go back there and sit and talk with him. And, and uh, you never know what that will lead to. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Support him as he leads you. And show honor and respect for him by supporting him. Even uh, when it's not easy to, even uh, when he's making a mistake maybe or, or you think he's doing something wrong and making a wrong decision, still support him if he really feels this is what he should do, like my mother-in-law did for my father and uh, my father-in-law. And I'm telling you that I know that that made my father-in-law feel so honored. And then highlight his good qualities. You know, when I do counseling with married couples or coming to get married, I always counsel with them three times before I'm marrying. I've got a couple of marriages coming up later on this year. I always sit, love sitting down. And I ask them this thing. I ask them this. Give me ten qualities about your mate that you admire, that you like. And they look at me like, ten? I said, yes, ten. You go home and work on it this week. I'll see you in a week or two weeks. Whenever we check. Come back. I want 10 qualities and I want five qualities that you hate. Well, I don't have any. Yes, you do. Just look hard enough. There's nobody out there. You can't find five things about them that you absolutely hate. You might not be able to see it now, but you will see it after you get married. So look real hard before you marry this jerk. <laughs> And you know, it's never failed. They come back and they got 10 good qualities and they got five bad ones. Sometimes they come back with 20 qualities. Blows me out of the water. And sometimes they come back with just 10 or there might be nine. Uh, but they always come back with some good qualities. And what I'm trying to get across to them is look at all the good qualities. Get your focus off the bad qualities. And when you do that, uh, you'll be able to praise your husband and it'll bring a positive attitude into your family. So look at the good things because there's not one man in this room that doesn't have some great qualities about them. Amen. Even Cody. <laughs> I know I can pick on him, so. And I wanted to encourage Christine a little bit. Hey, just be patient with him. He's, he's doing really good. I know, I know for Valentine's Day, he took you to a farm fair, and I know that every year for Valentine's Day, he takes her to the, to the fair, farm show, right? Yeah, big farm show. I, said, oh. I asked Jeff, I said, where's Cody? He said, he took her to the farm show every, for Valentine's Day. I thought, wow, Cody. But Christina, being the submissive wife, she goes, with, and I think she enjoys it too. It's a big, big deal up there. And they take a trip, and it's a family day, and so it's quality. It's a good time. Amen. And so everybody's got their own way, own way of quality, of praising, and making the husband feel worthwhile and good. And women, that is your role, to honor your husbands. Amen. Amen. Praise them. Every opportunity you get to praise them, because they love that. Amen. And then love your husbands, Titus 2.4. The Bible says this in Titus 2.4. He tells Titus to have the older women train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. And uh, this is so important, so important that you 
show love to your husband. And love is something that takes learning. It's not just feeling. And you need to learn how to love your husband just like he's learning how to love you. And love is shown not by feeling but by action. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with deeds and actions in the truth. And uh, you show love for your husband and what you do for them. And uh, uh, when you notice a need in their life, meet that need. That shows love. And uh, uh, if, uh, do you, if you strive to do things that speak love to him, I'm telling you, it will touch his heart. And uh, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, if you feel loved when your husband buys you a gift, don't you think every once in a while you should buy your husband a gift? Huh? Bring something home for him. Set something up or do something. Don't have to cost a lot of money. My wife, I sent her back to Kohl's to take back an Amazon package, and she got $5 for taking it back. I don't know, ladies, if you know this yet, but every time you take something back to Amazon, which I'm doing quite often, I make $5. But this time I thought I'd bless her and let her take it back so she could get the $5. I always get that $5, and I try to spend it. Because you only have it for seven days, and then you lose the $5. And that's a lot of money to a missionary. Now I'm a missionary at heart. And so I sent her back with this package, and she gets the $5. And next thing I know, she comes home, and she says, look what I bought for you. I said, honey, why don't you buy something for yourself? She says, look, I bought this for you. No, real, real pretty sweater. It was on sale. It only cost me like $8 for it after I gave the $5 that I got for taking. And I'm, and I'm just wanting to hug her. I'm thinking, oh, she's such a... The selfless woman thinking about me. I should be thinking about her. And just made me appreciate my wife so much more. I'm telling you how to make it real. It's how to make it real. And this is important in marriage. Amen? Amen. I know for some of you are saying this is kind of late, Pastor Roy. We, <laughs> we've already made so many of It's never too late to try and heal a situation. And you never know. Maybe you're going to get married in the next uh, six months or year. And these teachings might help you. But there's five languages of love that are out there. There's a book and they gave it to us tw 25 years ago. Oh, they gave us this book in our 25th uh, uh, anniversary that we had. And, and Sandra Stewart bought us this book, Five Languages of Love. I'll never forget when she gave it to me. And, and I said, well, she must be trying to teach me something. And we said, and we read that book together. And boy, did it help us. It, it deals with uh, the, the five languages are words of affirmation, receiving gifts, quality time, acts of service, and physical touch. And I'm telling you, everyone has those needs in their lives in a marriage. Mine is words of affirmation. For hers, it's quality time. You need to learn your wife's uh, 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 love language and wives, you need to learn your husband's love language and minister to that. Meet that need in his life. Whatever it is, if it's, it's, if it's to get gifts or physical touch or what, yay! Don't go, whoa, don't go there. That's all he wants is sex, 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 sex. That's all he wants. Well, that's not all he wants. But I'll guarantee you it's, it's in born in him. Yeah, you can start turning red right now because I'm going to get in the heat of it all real quick. But the bed, Bible says in, the bed is, is, uh, uh, is honorable. Marriage is honorable. And the bed is undefiled in Hebrews. Chapter 13, verse 2. Marriage is an honorable thing. And the bed is undefiled. You know what he's talking about there? Sexual relationship. There's nothing wrong with sex in marriage. And men need that. Amen. They need it. Yes. Amen? Amen? All these guys are shaking their heads. <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> but not all the time Will you feel like it? And there's sometimes, not today. And I've had this many times, many times. It took me a long time to accept that. My wife physically, mentally, emotionally could not handle sex. And I was being stupid for asking her. 
because she'd been under such pressure and everything else. And she had such a gracious way of saying to me, Honey, can we wait? Can't you see that I've been up for 48 hours and I'm really tired? In fact, I'm so tired I can't even think. And, you know, please, could you just wait a day or so? That's a sweet way of doing it. Because guys will always want it. But guys, be understanding with your wife. Understand their needs too. And wives, understand your, your husband's needs. And I think it's a huge thing in a marriage. It's absolutely huge. I remember we went to counseling in Denver and they asked me how many times I felt I needed sex. This is years ago. And I said, three times. He said, a day? I said, no, no, throughout for the week. <laughs> And that's my wife. She says, I think once a week is plenty. <laughs> so there's a difference. There's a compromise. Yeah. So we had sex four times that week. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's a reality. And it's, it's honorable. It's the cherished thing uh, for a husband and wife to come together and become one. And that's what God was talking about. Not just to create babies, but to create a union and an an experience that's only sacred within a marriage. And when it's done outside of marriage, it's called adultery. It's called a fornication. It's called that which God disgusts and hates. But in marriage, it's honorable. It's precious. It's beautiful. And keep it for marriage. Amen. And enjoy it. Amen. Enjoy it. I know last... A few weeks ago, I got you all embarrassed. I said, my wife and I, 99% of the times, we just cuddle in bed. I'll hold her, and she holds me. And we'll cuddle all night long. I thank God I married a cuddler, because I'm a cuddler. And we'll just sit and hold each other all night long. We'll cuddle. 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll, I'll be me. We'll fall asleep and turn the other way. And all of a sudden, I'll wake up. And I, when I do, I'll just roll over, put my arm around my wife. And I'll just feel her pulling towards me. It just becomes second nature to us. I tell, I tell her all the time, this is my bliss in life. This is what floats my boat. <laughs> this is what makes me happy. This is what really makes me fulfilled in this old physical life. Is just touching you and you touching me. Isn't that beautiful? I'm serious. I am not joking. I'm being as serious as I can. It's the greatest moments in our marriage is just cuddling. You ask her. Ask her. Go and ask her now. No. (laughs) Set date nights. Wives, get your husband's attention. Prepare a special night for him when he comes home. Shock him. And, uh, or have something set up and you, you initiate it. Don't always wait for the husband to initiate it. I'm telling you, God will bless your marriage for it. It's sacred. And God will honor you and bless your home. And so don't see sex as a dirty word. And don't see submission as a dirty word. It's sacred in the eyes of God. And God will honor you and bless you, ladies, if you'll just take your husbands and submit yourself to them by being their helper, by honoring them as the weaker vessel and being there for them and to help them in every way. And then love your husbands like Christ would have you to love them. And you will have a home that is sweet. Amen. Honey, if you could come, help me on the piano. And if my singers could come, I'd appreciate it. Hallelujah. I enjoyed the worship this morning. Did you enjoy that? I really enjoyed that. That was so beautiful. And uh, you don't know the hours they spend preparing. And uh, Christina was telling me, I'm not feeling the greatest. My voice is not the strongest. And so we're going to sing fast songs. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. Thank you so much. And a lot of times it's not easy to be doing what you do uh, for the sake of the Lord, uh, but they do it, and they do it with, with, with joy, and they do it with all their hearts, and I appreciate that. And um, uh, I just uh, uh, 
con considered a blessing to pastor people like this that love God. Enjoyed you, Tracy, today. I always enjoy her voice. I don't always get to hear it real well yes. when they're blending together. And I like it when she does solos. How many like Tracy's voice? Woo, it's, nice. yeah. it's unique. It's different. I really, I really like that voice. And uh, I love my wife's voice. She doesn't sing like she used to because of her hearing. And so uh, she won't sing out as loud. She's always afraid she might get off beat. But I love it when she's home and she sings. We'll sing together. I absolutely love my wife's voice. When she started to sing, and I was in church sitting back there, I was just, I wasn't dating her, didn't, didn't even know if she liked me or not, but as soon as she sang and she was playing that piano, I was going, ooh. She sang with the trio, and they were so good, and I thought, ah, oh, wow. I've been enjoying that. Our darkest moments, our toughest times. We had a piano in Africa that, the Lord blessed us with from another missionary family over there, and she would play that piano when things were going tough in the battle, the war, bullets flying, and trouble, and difficult things going through the civil wars we were in, and the overthrows and the coups, and she'd get on that piano and begin to play, and we would sing. It would bring a peace and a joy and a comfort into our home, and, and I love her on the, phone, on the piano. And she, we have a piano at our house that was hers when she was a little girl. That's what she learned to play on. Her mom and dad gave it to her. And we enjoyed that piano so much. And she's going to play a song that I love. In my heart, Lord, be glorified. Not only in my heart, but in my home, be glorified. But not just in my home, in my marriage. In my marriage, be glorified. Wives, you should feel that way too. Husbands, you should feel that way. Next week, the guys are going to be sharing. Didn't you know that? I gave them a little glimpse into that. They'll be next, they'll sharing next week just what that trip meant to them. And uh, some, Jeff will be sharing about how, how uh, security, how the security of this church is so important. That's what class he went to. Tony, I don't know what he did. He had pages of notes. Start working on it. You've got to say, say something next week. Bill, he's one of the newest guys around here, facing cancer and everything else, and he had the time of his life yesterday. What a blessing he was. John went with us. John worked all night. Went home, showered, came, went to the conference. He slept through several of the, of, of the sessions because he was wiped out. I knew he was sitting there just sleeping. I put my arm around him. I felt so sorry for him, but he was there. So I want to be there. And he got something. He went to some of, some of the courses. That was so good. We were, we were so, so blessed by that. Sterling, Scott, I can't wait to hear what they're going to say to us. I'll be working on the other guys too. And uh, trust it will be a blessing to you next week. But men, we're going to take over. I'll be talking to you, telling what you do and uh, got to do. And we're looking forward to a, 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 a great session next week about the home. Amen. In my heart, Lord, be glorified. Lord, be glorified. It starts right there in the heart, and then it bleeds into the home. Come sweet. in here, 
there'll be something about you that'll set this place on fire. You know you've been in the presence of God. You need to be in the presence of God, not just here, but at home. And you bring that presence with you into this place. This place becomes lit up with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. In my church, church, our hearts with your love so the Lord with your love we learn to love our wives and with your love in our hearts our wives will learn to submit to us by the grace and mercy of your great love and the Lord you would blend our marriages together in such a bond of love and unity that no power no weapon of the devil could in any way separate that which you've joined together, God. And then you would keep us, keep us as one in the family. And keep us as one in our church. Keep us as one, O oh Lord, in you. And in everything that we say and do in the lives that we live would be to bring glory and honor and majesty to you. Grant that, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord. In my Grab all of your wife's hands. I'm going to lay my hand on her shoulder because she's playing the piano. Touch your hand and let's pray and make this our prayer to the Lord. In my marriage, be glorified. Amen. Tony, come on up here. You better come up and lay your hand on her. Tim, you better get up here. Hallelujah. Cody. No. Cody, Cody. Where's Cody? Cody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man. Man. The first time I've had him up here on the platform. <laughs> I love this guy. He's my buddy. Hold their hands. Let's sing it to the Lord. monsters over here. She's going crazy. But pray for your mates too and be thinking about that. I love you, Gene. He's such a good man. And uh, they make such a wonderful company. He has to work every Sunday. But I'm just glad that uh, you're here this morning, Cindy. Amen. Oh, and our
do that miracle right now of healings, and of blessings, and of hope. Families that are struggling right now, bring hope, bring happiness. Lord, where there's been struggle, let there be victory. I pray in our homes we begin to prosper, and the Lord, our hearts will be filled with the glory of the Lord, and that our marriages will become a symbol, hallelujah, of the grace of God and the love of God to everyone that sees us. And the Lord, they will admire our relationship, not just with you, but with our mates, for the glory of God. Give us miracle homes for the glory of God. Home, sweet home. I will bless you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Tonight, cherishing your spouse tonight, 6 o'clock. You'll love it. You'll love it. Hallelujah.